So Tulsi Gabbard did a very good job in the second Democratic debate. I want to give you a compilation here of some of her best moments. The reality is right now we don't have a health care system. We have a sick care system, and there are far too many people in this country who are sick and unable to get the care that they need because they cannot afford it. So the core of this problem is the fact that big insurance companies and big pharmaceutical companies who've been profiting off the backs of sick people have had a seat at the table writing this legislation. Now Kamala Harris just talked about Kathleen Sebelius who helped write her bill. This just pointed to the fatal flaw in her proposal. Sebelius works for Medicare Advantage, private insurance company who will stand to profit under her plan. If we're seeking to really reform our health care system, we've got to shut out big insurance and big pharma out of the drafting process so they cannot continue to profit off the backs of the sick people in this country who are searching and in desperate need of care. Congresswoman Gabbard, Congresswoman Gabbard, you took issue with Senator Harris confronting Vice President Biden at the last debate. You called it a, quote, false accusation that Joe Biden is a racist. What's your response? I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected Attorney General of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about reentering former offenders and getting them counseling. It is why, and because I know that criminal justice Thank system you, is Senator. so broken, that I am an advocate for what Thank we you, need Senator. to do to not your, only decriminalize, but legalize marijuana in the United States. I want to, I want to bring uh, Congresswoman uh, Gabbard back in. You're responsible. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Senator Harris. <laughs> My entire career, I have been about a Green New Deal. On day one as president, I would re-enter us in the Paris Agreement. Many saw the Trans-Pacific partnership issue as something that would be a critical tool to deal with the rise of China. You were against it. How would you ensure that the United States is able to remain competitive against China on the world stage? By pushing for fair trade, not trade deals that give away the sovereignty of the American people and our country, that give away American jobs, and that threaten our environment. These are the three main issues with that massive trade deal, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I think the central one was the fact that it gave away our sovereignty to a panel of international corporations whose rulings would supersede any domestic law that we would pass, either a federal law or a state or a local law. This is extremely dangerous and goes against the very values that we have as a country. What to speak of the fact that it would have a negative impact on domestic jobs and that it lacked clear protections for our environment. These are the things that we have to keep at the forefront as we look to enact fair trade deals with other countries to make sure that we continue to be a thriving part of our global economy. I, want to bring in, I would like to bring in the, the person on the stage who served in Iraq, uh, Governor, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Congresswoman Gabbard, your response to what Vice President Biden just said. We were all lied to. This is the betrayal. This is the betrayal to the American people to me, to my fellow service members, we were all lied to, told that Saddam Hussein had 
weapons of mass destruction, was working with al-Qaeda and that this posed a threat to the American people. So I enlisted after 9-11 to protect our country, to go after those who attacked us on that fateful day, who took the lives of thousands of Americans. The, the problem is that this current president is continuing to betray us. We were supposed to be going after al-Qaeda, but over years now, not only have we not gone after al-Qaeda, who is stronger today than they were in 9-11, our president is supporting al-Qaeda. Thank you, Congresswoman. Damn. So she did a very good job in this debate. There were even other moments that, you know, I couldn't put every one of her moments in there. Her closing statement was just on point, hammered the uh, illegal and offensive wars and said, we need to spend that money back at home. What are we doing? Wasting it overseas. That last line that you just heard there in the comp compilation where she says Trump is supporting al Qaeda, that led to a lot of controversy on Twitter in the immediate aftermath. And I'm sure that today there's, you know, whatever articles written about it and right wingers are probably coming after her. And uh, nothing actually, you know, better indicates the laziness of mainstream media and the laziness of conventional wisdom more than the reaction to what Tulsi said here. Because guess what? She is factually correct and she will be treated like, you know, a pariah and treated like a crazy person for saying something that's true and verified. So Donald Trump did a multi-billion dollar weapons deal with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has armed rebels in Syria and Sunni militias on the ground in Yemen. 60% of the rebels, at least, remaining in Syria right now are jihadists. The Saudi government is backing jihadists on the ground in Syria. The Saudi government is backing al-Qaeda on the ground in Yemen because al-Qaeda are the Sunni militias that are fighting the Shia Houthi rebels. I just want everybody to understand something. What I just told you is not an opinion. <laughs> That's not up in the air. That's not debatable. That's a fact. So, it, when she says President Trump is supporting al-Qaeda, that's true. Now, you could say, well, hey, that didn't have the appropriate amount of nuance because it's in a roundabout way because it's not necessarily directly arming them or backing them. It's, it's through a proxy in Saudi Arabia. Okay, I mean, you can make that argument, but you're reaching, you're nitpicking, because it's true. It's correct. And Donald Trump himself used to say it. Uh, Saudi Arabia is responsible for 9-11. Well, now he's president, and now they're funneling hundreds of thousands of dollars to him through his hotel in D.C. and through other methods. And all of a sudden, he's like, Saudi Arabia, bro, I love Saudi Arabia, bro, totally cool, bro. Give me more money, bro. I'll do your bidding, bro. So... Um, Tulsi Gabbard's 100% correct about that. I'm happy she said it. Now, I will say, though, that Don Lemon's response is classic Don Lemon. He's an airhead. He's not paying attention. It went right over his head. My guess is if any of the hosts actually really heard her say that, they might have pressed her on it, but they were just, like, trying to move the debate along. So he's like, all right, thank you. Anyway, moving on. I don't even think he heard it. Um, but she's right. She's right. And let me say this, because they're going to come after Tulsi for this, and I think she already knows this, and I think she'll do the right thing, but... Don't back down an inch. <laughs> You're correct. Double down, triple down. Be angry when they question you on it because they should know this. They're the media. They're people involved in politics who are acting like, how could you? Ari Fleischer tweeted some shit like, next time, uh, you know, um, they accuse Trump of overreaching when he goes after Democrats. Remind them that Tulsi Gabbard said he supports Al-Qaeda and Jesse Lee Peterson retweeted it and there was a bunch of faux outrage like, oh, how could you say something that's totally factually true? Fuck off, all you guys. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, she did a great job on Medicare for All. She absolutely, repeatedly just bodied Kamala Harris over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And she got the, a great audience reaction. And in the wake of this, what happened? Kamala Harris and her team... Kamala Harris had an interview with CNN afterwards. And she was like, oh, um, well, if she's going to come after my criminal justice record... She's an Assad apologist. They have nothing. They have nothing on her. They have nothing on her. Yeah, yeah. Assad. Her, one of Kamala Harris's staffers was on Twitter the entire time during the debate. When Tulsi kept bodying Kamala, it was just nonstop. Assad apologist, Assad apologist, Assad apologist. 
They have nothing. They have nothing. And these are the same kind of assholes who back during the Iraq war, or lead up to the Iraq war, would have said, Oh, you don't want to go into Iraq? I guess you love Saddam Hussein and dictators. Yeah, you're really, you're a real honest actor and, and um, you know, vital part of this national discussion and debate. Uh, so, Tulsi did a great job. And I'm curious to see what happens in the polls after this debate. I don't, I think the winner of, when you look at both debates, overwhelmingly Bernie is the winner. Um, I think Tulsi did a good job. Yang did a good job. I think Elizabeth Warren did a good job. I don't know if they necessarily had the standout performances. I think Bernie had the standout performance. But nonetheless, um, giant improvement over the first debate in my opinion.